Hello, my name is Shirley, and I'm 31 years old. I feel incredibly fortunate to own my own home, particularly given the current economic challenges in Canada. However, my husband doesn't share the same perspective. He tends to adopt a negative outlook, driven partly by pride as I am currently in a more lucrative position than he is. Presently, he holds a lower-paying job, which has become a source of frustration for him. Additionally, his mother's constant criticisms don't make things any easier. She often compares him unfavorably to others, urging him to achieve more by pointing out people like Stephen, who has excelled to become the CEO of his company, while my husband manages a local grocery store. This frequent comparison has significantly impacted my husband's self-esteem. During their conversations, she would press him about his job and the choices he'd made, sometimes even questioning why he couldn't secure a better position given his education. Caught in this cycle of negativity, my husband once claimed that he was the sole owner of our house in an attempt to garner some respect from his mother. Pretending the house was bought with his money, he hoped to stop her disparaging remarks. Despite knowing the truth, I supported his small fabrication. It was important for him to feel respected in his mother's eyes, even if it meant letting him claim that victory for a while. His mother, while initially pleased, continued to push for more, suggesting that he should aim for a higher-paying job. The pressure she places on him is immense, but as his partner, I stand by him hoping to provide the support he needs amidst the challenges we face together. Reflecting on it now, I see that allowing my husband Mark to claim he owned our house was a significant error. He began using this pretense as a means to undermine and disrespect me, particularly in front of his mother. When she visited, he'd adopt a domineering attitude, flaunting authority that he didn't truly possess. It was I who had worked hard to secure the comfortable, beautiful life we lived, but in these moments, Mark seemed determined to diminish that truth. In the presence of his mother, his behavior grew increasingly aggressive. He would loudly declare himself the head of the household, trying to impress her with a show of control. Shirley, come downstairs now. My mom's here and she wants food and a foot massage, he'd call out. I would comply, rushing to cater to their needs, all the while Mark and his mother would be deep in conversation. Don't just stand there, do what you're told, he commanded one day as I arrived. His mother, witnessing this, commented, It's good to see you're finally acting like a man. I'm surprised Shirley puts up with it, considering she's the breadwinner. Mark's retort was quick. Yes, but I'm the one who owns the house, so she has to respect me. Inside, I would roll my eyes at these exchanges. His sense of entitlement was troubling, Yet I understood that this facade was somehow crucial for him, as it appeared to mend his fractured relationship with his mother. Mark and his mother had once been close, but their relationship took a hit after he dropped out of college to pursue a get-rich-quick scheme that ended disastrously. He was left broke and too discouraged to resume his education. Despite her warnings, he had been too stubborn to listen, and the failure only deepened the rift between them. Now, as he tried to repair their bond, she often dismissed him while lavishing praise on his more successful brother, Stephen. Oh, I forgot to mention Stephen will be joining us for dinner, Mark added as if on cue. Come on, Shirley, let's go make some food. Through all this, I remained supportive understanding that beneath his flawed actions and pretenses, Mark was desperately trying to reclaim some sense of dignity and approval in his mother's eyes. After a long day working at a large company, Donna would often lament to me about her son's shortcomings. He must be tired after working all day at that big company. Ah, fine, she'd start, and then the complaints would flow. Sometimes Mark would overhear these conversations. Donna didn't bother to conceal her gossip, which only fueled her anger and need to assert control, reinforcing her dominance in the household. You might wonder why I tolerated this situation for nine months. My patience, however, was reaching its limit. 
One day, while Donna and I were in the kitchen, she began her usual tirade about how disappointed she was with Mark. It's just so sad having a loser for a son, she sighed. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Honestly, you're stronger than me. I might have left him a long time ago if I were you, she added. In such moments, I was at a loss for words. I couldn't agree with her. Yet disagreeing felt equally impossible, so I would murmur something non-committal. A couple of hours later, Stephen arrived. Mark, already in a sour mood, greeted him coldly. Stephen entered the kitchen and cheerily said, Hey, Shirley. Hey, Mom. Donna beamed at him. Oh, my dear, welcome. You've arrived just in time. Let's set the table. We need to talk to Mark soon because this has gone too far. Talk to Mark about what? I asked, perplexed and somewhat anxious. Oh, dear, you'll find out soon. Our visit isn't just a friendly one. We're here to discuss something important with you both, she replied cryptically. After we set the table and said grace, Donna decided it was time to disclose the true reason for their visit. I have something to say. Stephen and I have been discussing this for a while now, and I think it's time we brought it up with you, Mark, she started. Um, yeah, Stephen chimed in, hesitantly. You know your job right now isn't enough to sustain. Don't sugarcoat it, Stephen, Mark interrupted sharply. What Stephen meant to say next hit us like a cold splash of reality. Mark, what I'm trying to say is, your job isn't good enough for you to keep this house. Both Mark and I were taken aback, shocked by the blunt assessment and the sudden confrontation. We've been found out you can't keep this house, Donna declared, her voice filled with a mix of concern and authority. Well, not under your name at least. Owning a house is a big responsibility and we don't want to see you struggle to pay for it. So I think it's best if your older brother takes over the ownership. It'll save you from any future problems. Mark and I exclaimed in unison, What? The shock was palpable in our voices. I'm sorry, but that's not happening, Mark replied with unexpected firmness. Why not? We're trying to help you, Mark, Donna protested, her tone softening. I'm not a kid anymore, Mom. I can handle owning a house. I don't need you treating me like some charity case. Mark retorted, his frustration evident. Oh, Mark, don't be stubborn. Just go get the title deed. Let's discuss it and go over some details, Donna persisted. Unbeknownst to Donna and Stephen, I was the actual owner of the house. Revealing the title deed would unravel our carefully constructed facade and potentially alienate Mark from his family. Yet, I knew our deception couldn't last forever. Exchanging a glance with Mark, I sensed it was time for some truth. Donna, Stephen, thanks for bringing this up. It's time we tell you the truth about everything, I started, my voice steady. What truth? What's going on? Stephen interjected, a hint of confusion in his tone. Well, you see, we've been keeping something from you for a while now, I began. Before I could continue, Mark abruptly interjected, Oh, yes, the truth is, we can't find the title deed. I was taken aback by Mark's improvisation. I had hoped he would reveal the actual ownership, but instead he chose to fabricate yet another lie. We must have misplaced it when we were moving stuff around in the attic. You know how cluttered it gets up there with all our junk? It's probably somewhere in the mess, Mark added, sounding almost convincing. Come on, Mark, you should know better than to lose such important documents, Stephen scolded disappointment clear in his voice. Well, what do you expect from your little brother? He's pretty clueless, Donna chimed in, reinforcing the stereotype that Mark was the less capable sibling. This casual dismissal of his abilities stung, but it also made it clear that the time for honesty was quickly approaching, whether Mark was ready or not. Donna expressed her disbelief with a shake of her head. How he even managed to buy a house is beyond me she muttered. I'll search for the papers. Give me a couple of days to sort everything out. This complicates things, she continued, a frown creasing her forehead. We wanted to resolve this quickly, but okay, just find the documents and let us know as soon as you can. While the rest of the group engaged in lighthearted conversation and enjoyed their meal, 
I sat in silence, deeply troubled by Mark's recent actions. He had the perfect opportunity to be truthful, but instead, he chose to lay another lie on top of our already precarious situation. It's a well-known fact that lies tend to deepen the troubles the longer they're kept. Once Donna and Stephen had departed, I felt compelled to confront Mark. Seriously, Mark, why would you do that? I had to do it, Shirley. There was no other choice, he defended stubbornly. There's always a choice, Mark. You've been maintaining this facade for too long. Eventually, the truth is going to surface, I countered, my voice firm. I don't need a lecture from you, Shirley. I'm a grown man, he snapped, irritation evident in his tone. Then start acting like one. Taking responsibility for what you do is far more mature than hiding behind falsehoods, I retorted. Enough, Shirley. Stop nagging me. You act like you run everything, always bossing me around. But here's the thing. You're nothing without me, he blurted angrily. Excuse me? And whose name is actually on the title deed? Because it's certainly not yours. I shot back, my patience wearing thin. Well, maybe it should be, he retorted sharply. I can't believe you just said that. How dare you? I exclaimed, my voice rising in disbelief. Listen here, you ungrateful, spoiled brat. I'm the man of this house, and I'll do what I want. It doesn't matter if your name is on the title deed. This is my house, and I set the rules. Now I'm going to get the title deed changed to my name. It might take seven weeks. I'll just tell Mom it took longer than expected. Now go get that deed, he ordered, his tone dictatorial. I was left utterly speechless. In our five years of marriage, Mark had never spoken to me with such hostility. His ongoing need for his mother's approval had driven him to this point of aggression, showcasing a side of him that was both shocking and deeply unsettling. While Mark's recent behavior was far from excusable, I'm someone who believes in giving as good as I get. Some might call it petty, but I prefer to see it as a belief in an eye for an eye. However, Deep down, I knew that retaliating directly wouldn't solve anything. It would likely just lead to a shouting match, with harsh words flying and feelings hurt even more. So instead of losing my cool, I chose a more calculated approach. I went to our home office where I knew the deed was kept, as the meticulous one in our household, finding it was a breeze. But rather than simply handing it over, I had a different plan in mind, I made a photocopy of the deed. It was just a simple black and white copy, lacking the official stamps and intricate details of the original, but it was perfect for what I had planned. I slipped the photocopy into Mark's work bag and secured the original in my secret safe, which he knew nothing about. By the way, I put the deed in your work bag for tomorrow, I told him casually. I know you have to leave early, so I took care of it for you, You'll find it in there. Great, I'll need to contact the title company to start the process. He replied, assuming everything was in order. The next day, while at work, my phone rang. It was Mark. Hey, babe, you put a photocopy of the title deed in my bag. I need the real one for the process. Oh, did I? My mistake. I feigned innocence. The guy here won't accept the photocopy, and since your name is on the deed, I think you should be involved in the process, too. Unlike you, some of us have demanding jobs that require our full attention, he retorted, clearly frustrated. Let's schedule a meeting to discuss this, I suggested, keeping my tone neutral. What did you just say to me? Do you need my help or not? He snapped. I knew I'd angered him, but I didn't care. I wasn't going to let him off the hook so easily. He needed to learn a lesson. I was done being accommodating, so I allowed myself to be a bit petty, especially now when he needed my help more than ever. Yes, I need your help. Fine, I'll handle everything. Okay, bye, he conceded grudgingly. Tensions were rising between us because I was no longer tolerating his disrespectful behavior. I was determined to make sure he learned his lesson. A week passed, and Mark was on a mission to find that title deed. He searched every nook and cranny of our office, even though he knew it wasn't there. He even braved the cluttered attic, despite knowing it was unlikely to be there. But desperate times call for desperate measures, right? 
Mark spent the next week tirelessly searching the attic, even taking time off work to do so. Part of me felt guilty watching him search day after day, but I reminded myself that this was a necessary lesson. He needed to understand the impact of his actions and the importance of honesty in our relationship. Reflecting on the harsh words Mark had hurled at me dulled any sympathy I might have had for him. He had been ignoring calls from my mother-in-law and actively avoiding Stephen, fully aware that he had missed his deadline by a wide margin. As another week slipped by, one evening brought a joint call from Donna and Stephen. Hello, dear. How are you? Donna's voice came through the phone. I'm good, thanks. How are both of you? I responded, trying to keep the conversation light. Not good, dear. We've been trying to reach Mark, but he's been ignoring our calls about the title deed. Stephen chimed in, his tone laced with frustration. Yes, I've noticed he's been avoiding your calls. Is everything all right on your end? I inquired, already knowing the answer. No, actually, he still hasn't found the deed, Donna replied, her voice tinged with worry. That's concerning. Mark needs to get himself together, I agreed. I've been telling him the same, but he doesn't seem to listen. See, Stephen? Even Shirley agrees, that's it. We'll come over tomorrow to help him look for the deed. Tell Mark to take the day off. It's not like he's doing anything important anyway. Donna decided then and there. Mom, I think we should give him a bit more time, I suggested half-heartedly, knowing it might fall on deaf ears. I've waited long enough. These things take time, and the sooner we get it sorted, the better. Surely, make sure Mark is ready for a long day of searching because I'm tired of waiting, Donna commanded. Got it, Mom, I replied, but I kept the information to myself. I wanted Mark to face the consequences of his actions. He was planning to take another day off to rest, but instead, he would be confronted by his disappointed mother and brother. The next morning, as Mark was lazily sleeping in, Donna and Stephen burst in. So, you're sleeping instead of finding what needs to be found? Unbelievable. It's not a good look, bro. We took time off to help you and you're just sleeping, Stephen scolded him. What? What's happening? Mark groggily asked, caught off guard. We told Shirley we'd be coming to help, but it seems like you didn't want us to, Donna added, her disappointment evident. No, Shirley didn't say anything to me. Don't blame her. Mark quickly defended, still disoriented. She's been holding things together while you've been MIA. Why weren't you answering our calls? Stephen interrogated. I was just busy, Mark mumbled, his excuse sounding feeble even to his ears. Busy sleeping, it seems. Anyway, get up. We need to start searching, Stephen commanded. You don't have to search. I have the deed, I announced, standing calmly as all eyes turned to me. I had been standing just outside the door, overhearing the entire conversation, and I knew I couldn't let Stephen and Donna continue searching for something that was right in front of them all along. It was time to set things straight and address Mark's deceptive behavior head on. Why didn't you tell me they were coming? You know I've been exhausted from all this searching, Mark exclaimed, frustration evident in his voice. And why didn't you say you had the deed? He added, his tone accusatory. Because there's something everyone needs to know, I responded firmly, cutting through the tension in the room. Don't you dare, Mark tried to interrupt, but I continued undeterred. The truth is, Mark doesn't own this house, I do. My name is on the deed, not Mark's. He's been lying to all of you, and I went along with it because I loved him. But his recent behavior has made me reconsider. It's time you all knew the truth. Mark's face went pale. No, Mom, she's lying, he blurted out, but his voice lacked conviction. You're unbelievable, I said calmly, turning to hand the document to Donna and Stephen. It was the real deed, and there was no denying the evidence printed clearly on it. My name as the owner of the house. You've lied to us all this time, Mark? Really? I don't even know what to say anymore. Donna said, disappointment coloring her voice. But I do, Stephen chimed in, anger barely contained. Mark, you're pathetic. Don't try to deny it. 
You attack Shirley, saying she's nothing without you, when in reality you're the one who needs her. Mark looks stunned, his eyes wide as Stephen recounted his words. Yes, that day you proposed changing the name on the deed, you said a lot of hurtful things. You know I didn't mean it, Shirley. Why would you do this to me? You're my wife. Mark's voice cracked with emotion. Oh, I thought I was an ungrateful, spoiled brat. I replied, my tone steady yet full of reproach. The room fell silent as the gravity of the situation settled in and Mark realized the magnitude of his deception and its repercussions on our relationship. I thought I was a spoiled brat? Well, this is how ungrateful spoiled brats act, sweetie, I retorted sharply. Mom, let me explain, Mark began, desperation edging his voice. No, I've heard enough, Mark. You've disappointed me for the last time, Donna interjected, her voice thick with disillusionment. You kept up this facade to impress me. You've already let me down. It wouldn't be surprising if you weren't the true owner of this house, but to lie about it for almost a year and mistreat Shirley so much has left a bad taste in my mouth. I can't even look at you. With that, Donna rose from her chair, her movements brisk and final, despite Mark's frantic pleas for her to stay. He begged and pleaded, but she was done. Stephen, please, bro. I swear I wasn't trying to. Mark tried to defend himself, but Stephen cut him off. Shut up. I should punch you right now for wasting mom's time, for wasting my time, and for wasting Shirley's time, effort, love, and energy. This woman endured your foolishness for so long, and you still treated her like garbage. You're crazy. Save it. Don't bother contacting us for a while. Mom needs some time, Stephen snapped before following his mother out the door, leaving just Mark and me alone in the silence of the house. It was now my turn to speak my mind. You know what's funny? You call me ungrateful, but you're the truly ungrateful one. You're pathetic and your behavior disgusts me. I'm glad your mother and brother finally saw your true colors. And yeah, you might be a man, but you're not the head of this household. If you want to stay here, you better start respecting me and pulling your weight. Otherwise, you can find somewhere else to be the man. Mark looked distraught, his face a mix of shock and realization. In no time at all, he had managed to ruin three important relationships. That had to be some kind of record. He shouldn't have underestimated me. His actions had finally caught up to him and the consequences were more severe than he could have anticipated.